After ruling arcades and home consoles for six years, Street Fighter II was finally ready for a successor. Given how popular and successful the series had been since 1991, expectations were understandably through the roof for Street Fighter III. And when it arrived, um, people didn't entirely know what to think. However, over time the Street Fighter III series found its footing and forged its own legendary path, and in the 30th anniversary collection, you'll be able to experience this evolution firsthand. The first thing people noticed about Street Fighter 3 was how insanely gorgeous the game looked in motion. In an era where 3D fighting games were becoming more and more popular, Street Fighter 3 opted for lavishly animated sprites that rivaled those of a high-budget animated movie. Each character has something in the range of 700 to 1200 frames of animation, all at 60 frames per second. Even today, the game is still one of the benchmarks for beautiful 2D sprite-based video game animation. The second thing most people noticed was the roster. Ryu and Ken returned, but every other fighter was brand new, with American street grappler Alex positioned as a new main character seeking revenge against Gil, a two-toned paragon of human physical perfection who could control fire and ice. M. Bison appeared to be gone, along with all of his usual henchmen, and that's because Street Fighter 3 takes place after every other game in the series. Even Street Fighters 4 and 5 are set before 3 in the timeline. In fact, Street Fighter 5 actually connects into Street Fighter 3 by revealing Gil and the fate of Bison in the downloadable story mode, A Shadow Falls. If a red and blue overlord with flowing blonde hair sounds strange, other Street Fighter 3 fighters were just as out there. Necro's stretchy limbs and electric powers looked like a supernatural spin on Dalsam and Blanca, while the vagrant Oro appeared to live inside a sack and drop down before each match, fighting seemingly with one arm. Each character enters the Third World Warrior Tournament for their own reasons, but it's Gil's plans to take over the world that provide the real narrative backdrop for Street Fighter III. However, some characters that were all new at the time should look quite familiar to fans of Street Fighter 4 and 5. Dudley, Elena, Ibuki, Yun and Yang all debuted here, though Yun and Yang were just different colors of the same character. And while Street Fighter V's Laura Matsuda wasn't part of the team, her younger brother, Sean, was. It's understandable how fans took a while to warm up to these new fighters. After all, we just spent six years with Ryu, Chun-Li, and the rest of the Street Fighter II cast. But over time, the entire Street Fighter III lineup earned their place in the series. As with the Alpha series, if you knew Street Fighter II, you could still pick up Street Fighter III and understand the basics. But Street Fighter III offered a bit more under the hood for experienced players. The game had its own version of super combos called Super Arts, and each character had three to choose from before entering a fight. Super Arts were designed to add another layer to the complex nature of character matchups. But what really made Street Fighter 3 stand out in the series was the introduction of the parry. The new parry ability let you absorb an attack without taking any damage and then counterattack almost instantly. But it required expert timing and anticipation to pull off effectively by pressing forward or down on the controller right before an attack struck you. If you are particularly skilled, you could parry special moves or even entire super arts without a scratch, on the ground or even in the air. The series upped the pace by adding an extra movement option, forward and backward dashes. This ability has become so ingrained in player strategies that it remained in Street Fighter 4 IV and 5. Also, universal overhead attacks, which had to be blocked standing, 
were added to aid in mix-ups versus the new parry mechanic. Parries were intended to be high-risk, high-reward, and at first they were. But you can never underestimate the players that take on Street Fighter. After time, players became experts at parrying and began deflecting attacks left and right. The addiction to the parrying mechanic was born. Just as Super Street Fighter 2 and Alpha 2 overwrote their original versions, so does Street Fighter 3 Second Impact. The story still takes place after the others, with Bison and Shadaloo gone and Gil's Illuminati making trouble during the World Warrior Tournament, but now with a few extra characters and a handful of new gameplay features. The game's giant attack subtitle was a reference to the two new playable characters, Yurian and Hugo. Both were muscular, hefty fighters that brought even more intensity and aggressiveness to the game. Yurian was actually Gil's brother, able to control metal and electricity, perhaps most famously via his super art, the Aegis Reflector. Hugo, a massive pro wrestler looking for the ultimate tag team partner, was the latest Final Fight character to join a Street Fighter game. Also, instead of being alternate colors of the same character like they were in the previous game, Yun and Yang were now given unique movesets and were officially made two different characters. Akuma returns yet again as a hidden fighter, though he'd be back on the roster soon enough. One interesting tidbit about Second Impact is that it actually featured a widescreen mode that arcade operators could toggle on if they had cabinets that supported this display option. But today, with widescreen TVs commonplace, this feature is easily replicated within the Anniversary Collection. Not to be outdone by the introduction of parries, Second Impact introduced another mechanic that would become a Street Fighter staple for years to come, the EX Special Move. If you had enough meter built up in your super art gauge, even less than a full bar, you could activate an EX move, which was a powered up version of existing special moves performed by pressing multiple buttons instead of just one. For example, Ryu's regular fireball is performed by making a quarter circle motion and then pressing a punch button, but the EX version would use two punch buttons and gain additional properties at the cost of a chunk of your super gauge. EX moves introduced a new layer of strategy where players now had to really think about how to manage their super meter between EX moves and super arts. This concept of meter management has become a crucial part of the Street Fighter strategy as EX moves have remained in both Street Fighter 4 and 5. Each character also gained a personal action that gave them a character specific boost. Alex's personal action would raise his attack power, while Ryu's would lower his stun gauge, for example. The personal action was essentially a taunt with a reward, provided you were able to let the taunt play out all the way. Allowing yourself to be vulnerable in order to enter a powered up state was a great calculated risk to obtain a competitive advantage. This brings us to Street Fighter III Third Strike, first released in 1999. Today, Third Strike is often held up as the pinnacle of 2D fighting games, one that demands the utmost skill and precision to play at a high level. Third Strike's originality, strategic play, and visual beauty define what an engaging fighting game should be. The Third Strike roster expanded to 19 fighters, including two popular characters from the Street Fighter 2 days, Chun-Li and Akuma. The famous car-crushing bonus game from Street Fighter 2 also returned, though now players were demolishing a giant SUV. Four all-new characters made their debut in Third Strike. Makoto, a powerful Shotokan karate student. Remy, a nihilistic kickboxer. Q, a mysterious towering figure sporting a metal mask. And 12, 
the next stage in the ongoing experiment that also created Necro. As a shape-shifting blob, 12 may seem like Street Fighter 3 was doubling down on weird and wild character designs, but again, if the Street Fighter world can include characters like Blanca and Dalsim, is 12 really that far-fetched? Players were now given letter grades after matches, or granted a Master Street Fighter rank if you really overperformed, and you could choose between two different paths as you fought through arcade mode. Both are small changes that, in addition to the new UI design and new music, made Third Strike distinct from its predecessors. Third Strike did a lot to refine the control scheme of the 3 series. Personal actions were still performed by pressing Heavy Punch and Heavy Kick together, as they were in Second Impact, but now the two medium and light attack buttons were used for actions across the entire roster. Medium Punch and Medium Kick now performed the overhead mechanic, and throws were changed to Light Punch and Light Kick at the same time. These days, you'd think throws were always performed with this command, as Street Fighter 4 and Street Fighter 5 both adapted this throw input as well. This change to how throws were performed helped eliminate accidental throws and refine the exciting up-close gameplay Third Strike later became known for. The main new feature added to Third Strike, however, was guard parries, also known as red parries. Outside of alpha counters in the alpha series, you've never been able to perform an action while in guard stun, aka block stun. Red parries, however, now let you transition directly from block stun right into a parry, but the timing required was even more precise than that of a standard parry, which meant experts that pulled this off always wowed audiences. But it came at a price. To this day, Street Fighter 3 Third Strike is the only Street Fighter without absolute guard. If you started blocking a multi-hit move, you would normally automatically continue blocking if there were no gaps between the attacks. In Third Strike, however, if you ever let go of your guard at any point in time, you'll be struck even if you had already blocked a move beforehand. Due to many factors, including the parry and red parry mechanic, a technique known as Kara throws introduced by the new throw input, many character specific combos, and tons of matchup specific interactions, Third Strike really gained the reputation of being one of the most technical entries in the Street Fighter series, and is one of the reasons many experts still play it to this day. Though audiences were initially unsure about Street Fighter 3, over time it proved its staying power thanks to a passionate fan base that really supported the game. Fans discovered how deep and rewarding Third Strike really was, which led to some unforgettable tournament moments and, of course, the immortal Daigo Perry from EVO 2004. Like Super Turbo, it's a game that its dedicated fans have never stopped playing. And even today, new players get pulled into the beautiful artwork, the catchy music, the intricate matchups, and the oh-so-satisfying allure of parrying your opponent and reversing a match's momentum in an instant. One of the reasons, however, that the retro scene for the game hasn't thrived as strongly as Super Turbo was that there has never been an arcade-perfect port of the game on a console. Until now. With 30th Anniversary Collection, expect a whole new generation of players to discover what makes Third Strike so beloved to this day. And it's also interesting to think about the game from a story perspective. As of right now, this is still the furthest down the Street Fighter timeline we've really seen in-game. Bison appears to truly be gone, but is Gil down for the count? Are the Illuminati still scheming somewhere? Was Third Strike's fight for the future successful? We'll almost certainly find out over the next 30 years of Street Fighter.